Well, to get some analysis on those results, so we can cross now live to Tel Aviv to speak with researcher on Arab-Jewish relations at the Israel Democracy Institute, Mr. Arik Rudnitsky. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Uh, firstly, can I actually start by asking you about this joint list of Arab-Israeli parties that seem to make uh, substantial gains in these elections? Can you tell me how significant that is and will this group now have more power in Parliament? The achievement of the joint list is significant. Just five months ago, they were split into two smaller unions and they gained only 10 seats in the Knesset. And according to uh, current estimates, they are expected to gain between 12 and 13 seats in the Knesset, which is quite significant. This is equivalent to their historical achievement back in the 2015 Knesset elections. And there is a new attitude, a new atmosphere in the Arab Street that they really can introduce and create a real and genuine change in Israeli politics. But, but, I have to be very careful about that because in order for every party to play a significant role, it has to meet two conditions. First, it has to be relevant, and the joint list is relevant as of today. And second, it has to be legitimate, and in this sense, I'm not quite sure whether uh, speaking of uh, secular or national government unity, I'm not quite sure whether they're going to play a significant role. Uh, because uh, the two main parties remain, of course, the uh, Likud uh, party and the Blue and White of Benny Gantz. They're the two men that seem to have come out on top of these elections. Uh, which one do you think looks most likely to be asked to form the next coalition government? This is the question as of today's morning. We woke up here in Israel to a political draw that brings us all back to the 80s and maybe the early 90s. Uh, but uh, the question is, who has most of the chances to form the next government? This is for the president of the state of Israel, Mr. Reuven Rivlin, to decide. The question is whether we are going, we're heading to a national unity government, national secular unity government, or whether we are going to see new political configurations as of today. I know that uh, Benny Gantz had some telephone calls, and including that uh, to uh, Ayman Ode, head of the Joint Arab List, which is in itself a new development in Israeli politics. But it, it, we need extra time to see, first, the final results as of this evening, and second, who has better chances to form the new government coalition. Indeed, and we also heard from Benny Gantz that he does not want to form any kind of a coalition with Likud while Netanyahu is head of that party. Uh, overall, it looks like it was a bad day for Netanyahu uh, in these elections. You know, where did he fall down? Well, you know, uh, uh, statements, political statements before election day is one thing, and another thing is the political conduct after election day. We know that Blue and White will not form a coalition together with the Likud, but their aim, their political goal throughout the election campaign was to form a national unity government. And we, we need to see whether uh, the Likud party will do some reshuffle or uh, introduce changes into its ranks and maybe hold internal primaries. We need to see what happens with Netanyahu's uh, uh, internal problems in, the, in terms of uh, uh, the, the jurisdiction uh, issues that uh, he's facing. And uh, then, I think in two or three weeks from now, we can tell. As of today, uh, Benny Gantz and Benjamin Netanyahu has, ha both have equal chances to form uh, the new government coalition. Indeed, it sounds like there's interesting days of negotiations ahead. Mr. Arik Runetsky, thanks so much for taking time out to bring us your view on the situation. Mr. Arik Runetsky there from the Israel Democracy Institute.